What's up guys, Gary Blucha. Blue shirt, I'm a filmmaker and photographer out of Houston, Texas. And today we're gonna talk about all the gear and equipment you need to film a wedding. If you're new to my channel, I do vlogs, tutorials, and gear reviews just like this one. So if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. Now, let's get into the meat of what you need for a wedding video. So your first big decision is obviously what camera to buy. Me personally, when I first got into this, I wasn't sure whether I wanted to do photography or videography. I did one wedding for photography and one wedding for videography. Let me preface that. I didn't just like jump in and shoot weddings. I didn't feel right doing that. Some people do. I will say that stuff was terrible. My photos were probably better than my first videos. But either way, I didn't jump in head first to filming a wedding by myself without knowing what I was doing. The first big decision was what camera to buy. So as I was shopping around, I wanted to stay somewhere around the $3,000 price range, which I know might be expensive for you at first, but your camera being your main workhorse, I decided to go with the Sony a7 III. The a7 III is a workhorse. Does it have the best video on the market? No. Does it take the best pictures on the market? No. But if you're just getting into this and you need both, I think this is the best camera still in 2019 for a hybrid camera, which you can now get for like 1800 bucks on Amazon, which if you're interested in that, there's a link in the description below. But this camera can shoot 30 frames a second in 4K, 24 frames a second in 4K, It'll shoot 60 frames and 120 frames in 180p. Now, yes, it's just HD, but it's still great quality. Um, one of the things that I really loved about this camera is that it has a dual ISO, so it does really well in low light. It's got dual SD card slots, so that way you can simultaneously record data to both SD card slots, or you can set it to where when one fills up, it'll go onto the next and roll over. It's also got a nice monitor on the back of the screen that can turn and tilt up and down. Now, I will say the screen is not the best in sunlight. You really can't see it, so you really can't trust your eye, which we'll get to that later. Um, another thing that I definitely needed in a camera was HDMI ports and audio. So we've got HDMI on the top and audio here. and. It's also USB connectivity, so it's easy to update on your computer. And if you're any at all familiar with the Sony cameras, there's a lot of customizable buttons on the top. Uh, me personally, I really like the dials of the one and two. I keep my one at 30 frames a second in 4K in S-Log2, and I keep my two in uh, 60 frames a second in HD and also in S-Log2. That way, if I'm filming somebody that I need them in slow motion, it's really easy to switch between the two. Now, I'm not gonna do a full in-depth review on this camera, but those are some of the reasons why I chose it. And the last reason I chose it is the battery on the a7 III is very reputable. It can last me almost an entire day, but me personally, I like to take two batteries with me. Once I'm done with the ceremony portion of the wedding and the pre-wedding, I switch out my battery for the reception. I put the first battery on the charger and I put the second battery in my camera. That way I always know that I have one charged and one charging. First thing you need to buy is a camera. I highly suggest the Sony a7 III. Next thing you need is a lens for that camera. Me personally, I wanted something right off the bat that was gonna be versatile in focal lengths. That way I could have the most depth in my videos and also look the most professional with maybe not having the experience yet. If you have the money, I highly suggest getting the Sony G Master 24 to 70 F 2.8 lens. This guy is heavy, but it is high quality, especially if you're going to be doing this handheld weight is going to help you actually stay steadier. So this lens with the Sony a7 III is probably about five pounds together, probably a little less, um, which will definitely help you stabilize. The great thing about this lens is that it can go all the way to a 70 focal length and all the way back to 24 in pretty much no time at all. If you're just working by yourself and you're running gunning it and you wanna get two different focal lengths really quick, 
you're gonna need some kind of telephoto lens to go with it. I will say that in recent wedding films that I have switched to just one lens for the majority of the entire wedding and that is this little guy. Sony F1.8 50 millimeter lens. I really like the depth of field that you get with a 50 milliliter lens. So if you were really trying to go as cheap as possible and couldn't afford something like this, I would definitely go with something like a 50 millimeter lens or maybe even an 85 millimeter lens just to get that depth of field. Another thing that you need to think about filming weddings is you're gonna be stuck in a low light situation in some way, shape, or form most of the times at the reception. So when you have something with a dual native ISO like the Sony a7 III paired with a really fast lens, which if you don't know what that means, f1.8 means that it lets a lot of light in um, even in a low light situation and so Basically, you're not going to introduce grain or noise into your footage because your camera and lens can support that. Now, the next thing that I would say is an absolute necessity is audio. And the best thing, hands down, that you can buy right now for the price is some of these Tascam DR10Ls. These are very compact, but they are also very easy to use. Um, I really like them because you turn them on here on the side and once you swipe them up to record, you really have to hold it in order to get it to stop recording. So you don't have to worry about um, it hitting a button in the groom's pocket or anything like that. Another cool thing about this recorder is that it can record at normal decibels and also at negative 12 decibels. It's, so it's gonna record two files, one at normal decibels and one at negative 12 decibels or whatever you set it at, so that way Let's say the groom gets really loud at a certain part in his speech. Well, you have a backup that's not peaking on your audio. You can still use whatever he said, so it automatically has a backup for you. So this thing is definitely worth it. I would say that's a necessity to have. I really didn't think audio was a necessity at first, but once you throw that audio in in the editing room, it really can make a lot of the wedding video for you. At that point in time, sometimes it doesn't even matter what video is being shown. People are listening to that person that they know, words that are being said along with your beautiful video. It really adds value to your production. Next minimum thing that I would say that you need is definitely ND filters. If you don't know what ND filters are, they'll basically block light out or let more light in, depending on your scenario. If you're in something that is like S-Log2 that requires a certain exposure or if you just wanna leave your aperture at a, the lowest it can possibly be on a sunset or a sunny day, well, you're gonna need one of these bad boys to drown the sun out and the highlights out so that way your highlights aren't blown out in post-production and it looks like you filmed on an iPhone. So the next thing that I would definitely say you need is some kind of external monitor so you can see what you're shooting. Now, definitely the best monitor out there for the price is probably this Feel World F6 monitor it can display in 4K if your camera supports that. You can preload LUTs onto an SD card and then stick them into the bottom so that way you can see what your color grading is gonna look like in post-production. Um, it's got an HDMI in and an HDMI out. The cool thing about this is you can also do DC power out. Okay, it uses the best battery on the market in my opinion, which is these old Sony F style batteries. Um, plugs it back here on the back. Um, you put it on this little swivel mount and you can actually power the monitor and your camera from one big battery and that'll probably last you at least four hours. The cool thing about that monitor is that it also comes with a sunshade, which is definitely necessary on a sunny day, an HDMI cable and a battery. So off the top, I would say your camera one lens, a monitor, and one source of external audio would be the bare, bare, bare minimum. Um, but if you're going to take your films to the next level, I would definitely recommend something like an S is an absolute workhorse. If you want stable footage, professional looking footage of the bride and groom walking towards you as you're following at the same focal length and distance away, you need this. <laughs> Okay, me personally, this is my pride and joy and my love. 
I think sometimes I love this more than my camera. The Ronin S is amazing. You can buy tons of accessories. Me personally, I like this because I can go two-handed. On the back here, you've got a joystick. Okay, you've got a record button. That way you don't have to keep reaching back up to the camera to hit record. And you've also got different modes. You've got three different modes that you can program. So me personally, I have one that's a slow follow wherever my hand goes. That way I don't miss something because kind of the um, beauty and the beast about being a wedding filmmaker is that things usually only happen once and you have to get it. So in my opinion, I have that number one set on slow to my hand so that way if something happens and I have to go there quick, well, at least it's gonna be smooth and cinematic while I get there so that way that footage is still usable. My second mode I have set to a complete horizontal, so no matter if I go up or down, my camera stays perfectly on the horizon, which is honestly what I leave it in most of the wedding day. And then three, I have it in sport mode where you can do a barrel roll. Um, I would use that if I was more like trying to get a faster shot of the bride and groom maybe running or jogging or getting that like nice cinematic run towards each other or something. But the cool thing about this gimbal is that it comes with that case and you can get it for about 500 bucks. Me personally, I have two batteries because again, I'm just a freak about having a backup battery source. But it's also very customizable to where you can get things like a handle and a monitor mount. You can also get a focus wheel that goes to your camera with a focus motor where you can actually pull focus on manual mode if you wanna get there someday. Me personally, I'm not even there yet, but I know that this guy can grow with me. So I would definitely recommend the Ronin S. All right, the next thing that you are going to without a doubt need is tons of SD cards. These guys will never fail you. That's a lie, they do. Still hasn't happened to me yet, knock on wood. SD cards can get corrupt, they can fail you, but you always need extras on hand because if you run out of footage, it's not like you can delete footage on the fly and keep going. Especially something like with the Sony a7 III that can record in 4K, the file sizes are massive and they will eat up your memory card in a heartbeat. So what I typically do is in the Sony a7 III, I simultaneously record, so if one fails, I have a backup, but on those, I have three different sets. So I have six total that I use on a wedding day. I use two for pre-wedding, I use two for the uh, ceremony, and then I use two for the reception. That way, I know I'm completely backed up. I've got two different sources of each one of those events. And then I also take it a extra step further, and I actually back up all of my SD cards onto this Western Digital um, portable drive that actually has an SD card slot on the side okay so after the wedding day when I get home at night I go ahead and back up all the files onto this external drive which is also a copycat of my normal external drive then I have three different places of where that footage is so that way if anything were to corrupt I've got two backups and if anything were to happen in that second copy I've still got one more shot at having it all right, what else do we need? Lighting. Okay, my first two weddings that I did, I didn't have any lights and it was dark on the dance floor. I couldn't get my settings right on my camera. So I needed to seek out some kind of solution. And the one that I came up with was this Viltrox 116 light. Um, it runs off those same Sony F batteries. These are like 20 bucks on Amazon. Okay, you turn them on and you can actually adjust the power. You can also adjust the Kelvin. So all the way down to 3300 Kelvin, which is like an orangey light, all the way up to 5600, which is a very bright light. And then on top of that, you can also dim the light as much as you want and all the way up to 100%. Just on one of these batteries alone, it'll last the entire reception. So. That's cool, having all the same type of battery. That way I can just load up on those, have them charged up, and we're good to go. I personally take three of these to a wedding. I put them on these stands from Amazon Basics, which are also like 20 bucks. I stick them by a post or a corner on the side of the dance floor, rig them up, turn them on, and forget they're there. In doing that with the lighting, you're gonna have great lighting on the dance floor. 
lighting up your subjects just like you need them to be with also not lighting up the dance floor too much to where it's kind of a turn off for the actual reception. The next thing that you're gonna need is some kind of recorder that can record from the DJ soundboard. This is the Tascam DR40, and the cool thing is that it plugs right in to the actual DJ soundboard. Let's just say worst case scenario, the DJ sucks and doesn't have a soundboard. It still has these dual um, recorder mics here on the side that you can actually put next to a speaker. And just like the other Tascam DR10Ls, it has the dual audio recording so that we can record one at normal and one below, just in case one peaks too high. Now, if you're not gonna go the gimbal route, I would highly recommend some kind of monopod. This is the Milibu uh, Manfrotto knockoff from Amazon. It's held up pretty well with the exception of one of these foot rubber stools missing, which really hasn't affected it at all, but it's got a nice retracting height. And I have actually used this before and screwed the bottom of the Ronin S onto here. So that way I've got that on the Ronin S and then all I had to do was control it with my joystick. That was when I was a solo shooter and did not have a second shooter and knew that every single shot I was getting was the only shot that was being shot. So I only had one take at it, so I needed the most stability possible. All right, the next thing that I would say that can definitely take your films to the next level is some type of drone. This is the Mavic Air. The reason I went with the Mavic Air is because it is small and fits in my bag very easily. The remote controller is also small, okay? Everything goes in this nice little bag that comes with it. Boom, fold it up and fits nicely in my bag. Doesn't take up too much space and I can still get drone footage if I need it. Now, I will say that that footage is not the best. The picture profile is definitely different. It's not as flat or log as I would like it to be. But for the price point of that drone compared to like the Mavic Pro 2, that's really all I need for a wedding. All right, another thing on my wedding film list is different sources of audio that are on camera, um, which really is just to sync up audio to people talking. In my opinion, you really don't need these. You can just use the internal recording on your camera, but if you have this, it's definitely nice to be able to just sync your footage later and not have to play with, is this on beat with what that person's saying? Is it off or, or what? It also helps out when you're editing if those two clips are actually anchored together, that way they don't change. And these guys will definitely help you do that. All right, the next thing that I would actually suggest is getting some kind of second camera. Now, this doesn't necessarily have to be manned. Me personally, what I do is I stick this Sony A6300 on a tripod, just like the one that it's on, which is also a Manfrotto knockoff with an external monitor on there. Um, what I do is I get wide shots with this or I'll stick it on one side of the bride or groom reaction and I'll get the other side with my A cam. Having a second camera but definitely will make your films look more cinematic. All right, and last but not least, you need batteries and extra batteries. I would say rule of thumb for each piece of equipment, you need a minimum of two batteries. So this is honestly about half the batteries that I have. The other ones are running lights in the room or plugged into a camera. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and got some good information out of it. If you're looking to get into filming weddings, I think it's a great place to start building your business and also making some consistent money in the future. It's gonna take time to actually build your market and your network, but once you get there, weddings can be a very consistent market to be in, which in the videography and photography field, is sometimes rare to have a consistent source of income. Guys, that wraps up this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. And if anything, it helped you make some purchasing decisions on what it's gonna take to actually start filming weddings. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.